All right, welcome to the first ever notch tutorial of mine. And in this one, we are going to build this fabric here that you can see weaving itself in the background and actually in the foreground. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about notch before we actually dive into this. Uh, there's a few things I want to mention. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's also a node based programming language. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the interface in a minute. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a really, really powerful software for real time rendering and for making pretty sophisticated 3D uh, animations, 3D renders, procedural stuff, uh, generative art, live visuals, all these kind of things. So it's really focused on visual art, which is really kind of my thing, right? So uh, I'm really in love with the software and you can create some beautiful, beautiful renders and artworks. Um, but there are some downsides that I want to address right away because uh, they're really quite big downsides, I'd say. And uh, the first one being, I'm sorry for all the Mac users, but this is really Windows only. Uh, generally, I mean, if you're working in this field, I personally feel like it makes a lot more sense to work with Windows anyways. But um, yeah, it's just a, a fact, Notch is Windows only. And the other thing is um, it's super expensive. That's kind of the, the main problem. Their pricing model is honestly not that great, <laughs> to put it very, very diplomatically. Um, I'm, I hope they change that in the future and I hope they make this more accessible because it's really not that easily accessible for everyone. But um, yeah, the cool thing is once you do get started with it, and uh, I, I will post some resources to, to get started with it in the, in the description, you can check that out. Um, it's really, really quite simple to learn and you can make really, really cool renders in a very short amount of time. So yeah, I'm really, I've really l learned to love this software and yeah, I haven't actually been using it a lot. So please don't uh, think I'm a professional in this. I mean, sort of in this field generally now, but like not uh, with this software. Um, but <clears throat> you can already do really cool things after a short amount of time of learning it, especially if you already have some kind of background of, of touch designer or similar node based programming languages as I do. So that can definitely be beneficial. And generally, if you have a sense of 3D uh, software, it's, it's definitely kind of similar to that. And um, yeah, so I think I can just uh, sort of get started. Just one, one, one last thing I want to add here is who this t tutorial or these tutorials are going to be made for. And um, basically, especially this one is really a mixture of, you know, it's, it's for people that already have experience and just want to know how to do this very thing, even though I think if you know Notch a bit, then you probably have an idea of how this is done. Um, and the, yeah, I, I think mainly what this is about is to show people that have no experience or haven't even heard of Notch to sort of see and um, yeah, like what, what is possible and uh, yeah, how to, how to do it, what the workflow is, or at least what my workflow is, right? I, as I said, I'm, I'm just a beginner myself. I'm, I'm just learning this. So this is probably not a best practice video. It's just... Um, me experimenting and making some fun stuff that hopefully that I feel looks pretty nice. All right, so enough of the talking. That's, um, I mean, I'm gonna continue talking obviously, but uh, yeah, just wanna show you around. I don't, I'm not gonna explain this um, for a beginner because uh, that would, it, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. I might do like a, um, like a beginner course at some point, but for now I just wanna, sort of show you the workflow and I'm not going to really go into the UI or all the different systems that you can use here. So, so yeah, um, as usual, just like in the other, uh, touch designer tutorials, I will delete everything in this network and just rebuild it from scratch. So you can follow step by step or just see how it is done. Alrighty. So let me do that. I'll delete all of this and you can see the root node. So let's, little thing here is actually like that stays. You can never delete this. Um, this is like the, the, the base, the foundation kind of of the whole network and everything has to somehow be connected to that. All right, so we're actually gonna start with a little cloning setup and clones are really kind of similar 
quite similar to, to instancing. So what I'm going to do is just add a random cloner. Usually you just work with the cloner, but um, I mean, yeah, it depends on the use case, obviously, but I'm just going to use a random cloner for this case. And uh, just, just some things before we actually go on, there's a few things I have set up here. So I've turned on all of these. And um, actually, for just for the sake of seeing things better, I'm going to turn off deferred rendering. So we're in the root node here. And uh, also one thing we we'll want to definitely do is go to click on this P and set the frame rate because we're going to be working with trails and particles. So it really makes sense to have a locked frame rate in this case. So in my case, it's 30. All right, so let's get <coughs> let's keep going. So I've, I've uh, created a random cloner here and I'm going to add a shape 3D. So, uh, which in this case, just going to stay a sphere. So we can change this here. We have a list of possible uh, shapes that we can select from. But in this case, I just want to have a sphere. And uh, I can actually go down with my subdivisions X and Y. And what I'm going to do now, because what the random cloner does, um, we can I can just by pressing Control R connect this to the root. And then we can see it just creates a bunch of um, spheres like a bunch of copies basically of this so we could also change this and then it copies those those objects um, and just puts them in a 3d grid basically so we can we can actually we can change the way it's like being spread over the space here and we're going to do that in a second but um yeah, basically that's the idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a uh, combined geometry here because right now what it's doing, it's just creating copies of, of all of these uh, meshes. And we actually want to sort of treat this as one mesh that we can spawn pa particles from or emit, emit particles from. So I'm gonna add uh, the combined geometry and uh, connect that to the root and then connect this to the random cloner. And now this is basically like nothing has visibly changed, but it's still sort of now everything is like one mesh. All right, <clears throat> cool. So what we can do now on a random cloner is uh, go down with the spread Y to like one. And I'm gonna go down with the with the clone scale 2.5. It's just so my all my spheres are smaller. Let's change to five here. So I just press five. So now I'm in the orbit view. Otherwise I'm in the sort of camera view. Um, we're gonna look at that later. All right, so I can just orbit around by pressing Alt and then dragging my left mouse and <clears throat> I'm going to increase the scale randomness. So we just have a, like a bit of variety in the scaling. And my spread X, I'm going to change that to 4. And my spread Z, I'm going to change that to like 3. So now we have this little uh, setup here with all these spheres. Spheres. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to copy this little network and just paste it next to it. And just uh, again, connect this to the root. Let's just drag this down a bit so it kind of looks a bit cleaner. Um, might actually want to go like this just to make it even more clean. All right, <clears throat> so um, now it's basically we just have the same thing twice. Let's just go to our random cloner here and let's go ahead and change the seed to like, I don't know, something else, something like that. So basically like we can't really see the difference now, but we can like, let's actually go to both of our shapes and turn uh, the visibility off. It's not actually changing anything, but now we, and we're in control of uh, changing the visibility with our geometry. So now we can just go like on the combined geometry, we can like display one of them or not. <laughs> uh, right, so basically the idea here is that we're now gonna build a particle system. And this first little system that we built here um, is going to be the emitters, so that the, the the mesh that we are emitting or creating particles from. And then we have a second combined, like a second system here uh, that is attracting these particles or basically drawing the particles to itself. All right, so to create a particle system, let's go to the particles. And you can see we have a few uh, main particle um, uh, nodes, and then we have like effectors, emitters, rendering, and shading. So we only uh, we always need a particle root. So I'm just gonna we can either drag it in or double click. I'm just gonna put that in here. And I'm gonna connect it to the root again by Control R. So now we have a particle system, and now we can add things to it. So first off, we always need an emitter, and I already just uh, mentioned that we we want to emit 
from the meshes. So we're going to use a mesh emitter. And uh, again, I can con uh, press Control R. And now this mesh emitter is connected to my particle root. And now I can use my combined geometry here, which is now one mesh, right? We can connect that here as the mesh, um, what's it called? Um, yeah, object nodes, whatever. <laughs> we can just um, uh, pipe that into here. And now you can see before it was like sort of red complaining and now we're, we're all good. All right, nothing is happening now. That's totally fine. We actually need uh, two more things here. So first off, we need a renderer, which is really quite important um, to actually display our um, our particles. So in this case, we actually want to use a trail renderer. And I'm going to just put that here and again, connect it to the root. And you're noticing the root is now like the particle root. It's not the, the project root. And we also want to have an effector because now if I'm playing this, like I already was playing, you can't actually see anything because they're just being like created wherever the, the spheres are and nothing is happening. So uh, to be able to see them, we can go to effectors now. And we'll actually want to use two effectors in our case. So first off, what I want to use is a turbulence effector. So I'm just going to drag that in here and connect that to the root. And if I now play, you can already see they're like randomly moving around. So I can press F9 so you can see the whole thing in full screen. And now we can see it's already, I mean, it's already looking really cool. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's quite easy to make cool stuff with Notch. But let's go further with this. First off, I actually want to get rid of this uh, by pressing Control-1. I just want to bypass this. And uh, what I want to do now is add a mesh attractor. And I'm just going to connect that to the root now. And nothing is happening, and it's still complaining. Let's now use our second combined geometry and put that in here, too. And now you can see some of these um, meshes are attracting the particles. To uh, So it's like, you know, we want this to be further like expanded, not only go to like from one mesh to another mesh. It's kind of oddly uh, distributed right now. I mean, again, this looks pretty cool, but it's not what we're going for. So let's go to our mesh attractor. And uh, what I want to do here uh, is first off, I might want to change the radius, even though I'm not entirely sure if that's necessary. But uh, mainly what we want to do here is increase the randomness, maybe to like 0.9. And now you can see they're actually being like spread in all directions. So we get these cool, this cool net already. It looks much more like fabric already. I mean, this is sort of a fabric. Um, and now we can get back to our turbulence um, uh, effector. So if I just restart the playhead, we can now see they're like not moving in a straight line, but in more interesting, noisy ways from one uh, sphere to the other. So actually, I don't want to see the spheres, so I can just use these, I uh, can select these and then turn off the visibility. And now we can see we get just the trails. Cool. So <clears throat> um, that's really kind of it for the for the main um, for the main technique. We can uh, we might want to actually increase the turbulence uh, like velocity amount a bit. And we might also want to increase the radius here. Oops. What the hell did I do now? Okay, let's just go. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, right. There we go. Um, <laughs> right. So right now everything is completely white. Um, we actually want to add some, some lighting and make this more 3D-ish because it looks very much 2D right now, right? So um, first off, again, I want to... Uh, turn the visibility off here because I, I just went back a couple of steps. Sorry about that. We can change the noise scale if we want to. Well, let's just get back to that and, and, and go on with some other stuff. So first off, we want to uh, turn on deferred rendering. And it doesn't really make a difference right now because we're actually drawing lines. So in our trail renderer, we want to go to... Um, uh, the primitive type here and change this to extruded geometry and now everything disappears and that's totally fine because um, now there's actually 3d geometry but there's no light to show it so what i'm going to do is add a light and just drag that in here and connect it to the root and you can already see something happening here all right but the light is basically just in the center 
what we can do here, and I'm going to make the, let's just go full screen so you can see it better. If I press E and R and T, I can like switch between, even Y as well, um, I can switch between different modes. So I can like position the light like this, draw it up, and I can press R to like rotate it down. I'm going to rotate it like this and just bring it somewhere else. Maybe rotate it slightly like this, this too. I'm just gonna go around like this and you can see how this is actually all 3d stuff which is beautiful so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this light and paste it paste it and then I'm gonna position the other one like on the other side so something like this okay looking uh, all right looking all right so um, now we have two lights that are shining on our scene. And um, <clears throat> we're gonna come back to that. On my trail now, I wanna change a few things. So first of my line thickness can be a bit thicker, a bit more. Uh, one second. And um, we wanna also change a few other things. So first off on our mesh emitter, actually, <laughs> it's kind of a mess. <laughs> well, I'm still learning this too. <laughs> on our me mesh emitter, I wanna change the life to be much longer. So particles just live longer. I want to also increase the randomness here to one. And I want to go down with the life randomness so the particles don't just die in between. But maybe maybe let's go up to like 0.5, something like that. All right, yeah, that's looking good. And uh, now what I want to do is, uh, wait, let me just quickly check here. Also, yeah, that's all good. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm kind of confused. Okay, let's go to our trail renderer. And um, I'm at trail renderer. I want to change the um, trail decay here to like one or maybe point, point 0.8. Let's go with point 0.8. It's not full. Uh, maybe 0.7 <laughs> and uh, let's change trail fade range to like 1 and let's go up with the number of trail vertices to like 200 and now if I go here again um, stuff looks a bit different it's really like they're, they're basically just much longer uh, trails now the way I understand it but m one main thing that is really quite important here <laughs> that I haven't looked at at all is the number of particles. So um, if we want to have longer trails or yeah, we we'll actually want to decrease the number of particles. So we can just do that here and go down to like 4,000, for example. Yeah, all right. So that's getting closer to what we had in the beginning. And um, I'm not sure about the trail decay, maybe. Yeah, maybe should should go up with it, yeah. Let's go to point 0.8 after all. All right, so let's look at how to style this stuff a bit more. So first off, what we might wanna do is add an environment light, an environment map, so we can work with, uh, with a material better. And so I'm just gonna add that here. I already like added a bunch of stuff to my resources. So you just need HDR eyes. Uh, you can download them for free, or they're also in the, in the package if you like do the beginner course of Notch. And um, if you just load in an environment map and just drag in a bunch of HDR eyes, you can now select those from the list here. So I'm just gonna go with like glass passage for now, and I'm gonna go and add a material. And uh, we actually want to style the trails. So I'm, the trails are now actually a mesh they're actually geometry so we can just add a material to them so I'm adding material here and uh, on my material now I want to scroll down and take on environment mapping which I personally think should be turned on by default but yeah and I'm gonna go up with both my metallicness and like my roughness maybe my roughness even a bit more I don't know 0.5 something and um, yeah, now I have some metallicness going on there. Cool, so let's keep on going. I'm gonna add a null. So yes, there's also nulls in Notch. 
there we go. So geometry null, there's different ones. There's also procedural null, video null, but we just want to have a ge geometry null now. I'm going to like connect that to the root. And I will now add a camera. Like uh, not directly to the root, but to this null. That just makes things a bit easier if you want to rotate it. It's kind of similar as in touch designer. All right. <clears throat> and um, now if I press null on uh, null <laughs> zero on my keyboard, uh, we're actually seeing things from, from the perspective of the camera, like scene playing camera. So uh, if we press five, we, we see the orbit view. We can like drag stuff around. And with uh, zero, we can also drag it around, but it's kind of different. It's like, you know, it's a camera. <laughs> so let's actually just go back and set it to the default. What we want to do here, we could either um, position this perfectly with the, like in the orbit view and then just right click camera options and set this to the current view. But in this case, we can really just go up with the um, position Y to like maybe 10 for now. And then let's rotate the pitch around 90 degrees. And then uh, we're actually looking right right from above. So at the, at the whole structure. So now uh, we can see this is number five and this is like, like orbit view, <laughs> number five. And this is uh, the camera view. So um, yeah, this is what it currently looks like. What we can do now um, is we can add a, a bit of post effects to make this more interesting and a bit more um, natural looking. So first off, what uh, the first thing I want to add is a tilt shift effect. I'm just going to add that here and add it to the camera. We could also add these to the root, but um, yeah, the problem is then if we want to change something like in the orbit view, we don't actually want to have the post effect. So if I were to connect that to the root, now I also have the post effects on when I'm here. So it's good to sort of have the default raw version when you're in orbit view. And then if you look at the camera, you can sort of see um, what that looks like with post effects on. So, I mean, this also looks pretty cool. We can check that out later. For now, um, I want to change the mode to blur. And uh, I can leave the blurs. No, I'm just going to increase that slightly to like 0.8. And I don't like right now, it's really just a classic sort of tilt shift, right? There's just a horizontal line and then it's just getting blurrier to the top and bottom. Uh, we also have the option to add a gradient node here. So if you look at generators, there's a lot of like textures here that you could use. I'm just going to go with fractal noise. I'm just going to drag that in here and um, just preview it in the, in the viewport. So this is actually what the texture looks like right now. First of all, what I want to do, because you just, maybe you just saw that jump back. Um, so by default, it's actually set to lock to timeline. So every time the timeline restarts, which is every 30 seconds right now, it's going to like sort of jump. So I'm going to change this to running loopable. And then it's sort of like it, it never jumps. I want the width and height to be the same as my uh, project res resolution, which by the way, you can change here in the project then settings and then rendering here you can well it's so, so kind of wrong i just noticed well good to know good i looked there <laughs> um right so we have our fractal noise here and uh, in in this example it's actually like the preview doesn't help us that much because uh it's really quite subtle what we're doing here but i'm going to just change this to ridged too and go down with the amount to like 0.3 and also the animation speed to like 0.2. I'm just going to leave everything else as is. And I'm going to turn off preview and viewport. And I'm going to use this output and pipe it into the tilt shift. So now we can see um, we get this cool tilt shift effect. So we can also check out uh, what it looks like with sprites. So we might want to go up with the amount. Uh, I actually think that looks pretty weird. So I'm going to change it back to blur. We can even go up to like 0.1, I think. All right, cool. Let's add another post effect. And uh, the one I want to add now is one of my favorites. It's called Vector Blur. And again, I'm going to just uh, add that to the camera. And mind the order here, up up to down. Like this is the, the one that comes first and then the second and like, you know, so on and so forth. Same with these effectors, by the way. So the order of where you put notes actually matters quite a lot. 
All right, so first off, this looks really crappy. So we want to change the orientation here to 180, and you can instantly sort of see where we're going with this. So um, <clears throat> my steps, I'm going to change those to like 50. A strange sentence. And I'm going to go uh, up with the dampening, maybe to like 0.9. And I'm going to go down with my epsilon to like 0.1. And then you can see we get this cool, like if I just go control one, it's kind of hard to see like this, but really makes a difference and looks much, much more like, I don't know, natural and realistic in a way. I actually want to go to my random cloners and spread them apart a bit more. So I'm just going to change this to five. And um, what I also want to add now is a, a LUT. I'm not sure if you're familiar with LUTs. I was not before Notch, but um, LUTs are basically like filters in like Instagram or wherever. So they can just make your whole thing look a bit cooler. And there's a lot of things you can like download for free, like a lot of LUTs or like LUT. Uh, and there's also, of course, a lot of stuff you can buy. I just uh, downloaded a bunch of free ones and I'm just gonna use Contrail for now. And you can see it instantly uh, turns into this apply color LUT, which you can also find here. So now I can, I'm gonna connect this to the camera. You can instantly see what's happening here. I'm gonna go down with my blend amount, like 0.6. And then you can like look at this list because I've already dragged all of them in here. And then you can see they're like different filters. I'm actually gonna use Django because it just looks really sick. <laughs> but yeah, it's just these slight things that, I don't know, that I personally really love about Notch that you can just make things look a lot more cinematographically aesthetic does that does that make sense just make them look prettier right and and more sort of realistic right and to round this off a bit um, and to show you modifiers as well I'm gonna add a math modifier and what I want to do is just add a slight movement to my camera so one thing actually I just want to quickly show you with the continuous modifier I'm gonna just add that here and show you a few more modifiers. So modifiers are a bit like chops in a way. You have, um, like in Touch Designer, you have MIDI modifiers, OC modifiers, sound modifiers, and um, condition modifiers, all these kind of things. So with those, you can actually control the parameters of other nodes. So it's really quite similar to chops. So um, with the continuous modifier, I could, for example, go to my null now. And uh, I have this rotation. Yeah, I don't actually want to use the heading, but the pitch now maybe. No, no, the bank. And uh, just rotate the camera around like this. And I could do that by just using like you should always reset this to whatever uh, value you want to start at. And then we can use this output, put it on here, and maybe increase the speed to like five, or maybe ten. And now you can see we're like moving around and we can actually see the 3D, 3 d ishness of this, 3D properties. But I don't actually want this uh, in this case. Uh, what I wanted to do, what I was going for, you can just press Control Shift and then left click over, like while hovering over the lines to disconnect them. I hope you're noting this down, Touch Designer, <laughs> um, taking notes. Um, yeah, I actually want to just add a slight movement so it looks like some somebody's not like holding their hands entirely still. So I'm just going to add the math modifier here to the position X. And you can see instantly what's happening. This does not look good though, of course. So I'm going to change this to Perlin Noise. And I'm going to go down with the octaves to like 1. And I'm going to change the scale here to like... Point two. We, we really just want this to be subtle. So point 0.2 here, and like maybe point 0.4 here. Point 0.4 here. There we go. And now we can just uh, copy and paste this. I don't know why, but there is no seed option here for this noise. Actually, again, let's change this both to use deltas. And um, but what we can do, we can change the time offset, to maybe like 100 or I don't know. Let's just go to 1000. So it's basically like changing the seed. And now we can use that on the Y parameter. And now uh, it just looks a bit more interesting, I think, because we're like kind of moving around the structure and not just statically looking at it. Alrighty, is there anything I have forgotten? Well, one last thing. Uh, 
two last things. First off, there's the skybox, which I really like. Because, um, you know, it's kind of boring to always just see uh, an empty void behind the structures or the artworks that you make. So it's really cool to have the skybox. And when we're connecting that, nothing happens, <laughs> which is amazing, right? So, uh, but we have already uh, added a lot of environment maps here. So we can just pick those. And of course, first, it just looks very odd. Um, but for example, I might just use this for, let's just go with, I don't know, whatever. Let's just go with that. Let's maybe uh, go around, like change change this around, something like that. And let's just go down drastically with the brightness, say 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.1 here. Actually, it's, let's just see what else is there. Maybe something like this, and then we can just go up with the blur amount too. And you can see it just instantly becomes much more interesting, right? If we have no no skybox, if we do have a skybox, I think it really makes quite the difference. And uh, I mean, there's so many HDRIs out there that are really cool. So you can just check that out. And uh, another thing is um, we might want to use a film grading, which I also really like, maybe before the uh, LUT, which is a really strange word. And uh, you can instantly see how that improves everything a bit. We can um, go down with the chromatic amount, maybe 2.6, and it just looks a bit more c cinematic, I guess. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, I, I really like that too. Even though I don't want to like use it on everything, because you can, I don't know. But I don't know why. It just looks, uh, sometimes it, it can be a bit too much, so. I, I would always use this subtly. Right, uh, we can go ahead and change some, like we can change the seed on, on these ones to just have like different starting points, um, the different structures here. We can really mess around a lot with um, the, the particle systems. For example, wh one thing that's also really cool is that we can add, like if we just look here at the particles, and just look at all the effectors. There's really a lot of effectors here. One really cool one is the vortex effector. So if I connect that, you can see it sort of creates this, well, vortex, right? And it just makes things look really cool, like a it's kind of tornado. And of course, we could just change the velocity amount to something smaller, and then it's not as, yeah, as a strong of an effect. Whoops. Yeah, maybe that was a bit too little but too low, I mean. But yeah, there's all kinds of effectors you can use here. Just check those out and play around, have fun. And um, yeah, there's a lot of options in the trail renderer, in the mesh emitter. Um, not really in the particles itself. I barely change anything there usually. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think we have reached the end of this uh, tutorial. So I I really have a lot of fun with the software. It's really, really cool. I'm very happy with it. I, I hope that they change the pricing system. I hope that this will become more and more available to to everyone. But uh, I mean, if, you were, if you're already working for clients and if you're already doing gigs and stuff, then and if you like sort of professional live visuals and all these things, then I mean, Notch is just definitely a really cool tool for you to use. And I'm just like, I don't know, it just makes me really happy to see all these quality renders. And, and it's just sort of really what I've been looking for. And what I'm also really looking forward to is connecting this to Touch Designer, right? I don't, I don't want to move away from Touch Designer completely or anything. Please, please don't think that. Um, I'm definitely, I'll definitely keep on exploring Touch as well. And especially connecting these, like, for example, you can send in clone data from, like, instancing data from Touch Designer and then create clone networks and Notch to make it look pretty. You can use these networks actually you can, and make, make a notch block out of them and use them right like right away in Touch Designer if you're paying a lot of money. <laughs> and um, all of these things, right? It's, uh, there's, there's so many things to explore here. I'm really just at the beginning of exploring notch. So I'm very excited about this. And I hope you are too. And I, I also want to thank everybody who's supporting me on Patreon for making all of these videos and my explorations possible. If you also want to support me, you can follow the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.